right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Donna Serdula, who is over in Philadelphia on the East Coast. How are you doing, Donna? I'm doing great. How are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. And Donna is, she is your LinkedIn profile writer. Uh, so uh, one of the things she does is help people optimize LinkedIn. And what we're going to talk about today is how to optimize your LinkedIn profile to get found. So um, Donna, let's, let's just dive straight into it now. I mean, yeah, LinkedIn was huge, like pre-pandemic and all of that and it's become even bigger through the pandemic but it's become it's become awfully noisy right i mean it turned into a bit of a spamming platform for a while there during the pandemic so so how do you stand out in a in a platform that's so noisy right now you know, it's it's funny when when you say it's so noisy. I think there's I think there's a small group of people who are very noisy. I yeah, yeah, but that's <laughs> always the case, isn't it? <laughs> I I think I read somewhere it's less than one percent of their um, their monthly users are actually actively creating content. Um, but you know, at the same time, I do think that LinkedIn is a tool. And it's a place that people go to learn more about who they're going to be meeting with. And I got involved with LinkedIn back in the day because I had my own you know, territory. I was in a very cutthroat, high pressure sales environment. And what I saw back then is something that I, I still see today. And that's a lot of people look at the profile and they think it's a resume. And it's so much more, you know, a resume should just really align you to a job. But for salespeople, you don't want your, your profile to look like a resume because what, what, what would that resume say? I love to prospect. I love to sell. I could sell anyone anything. Um, you know, like it, it, it would turn your audience off. Mm -hmm. So oh, like just terribly would turn them off. So, you know, it's, it's really about saying to yourself, look, there are people out there who are looking for me, my services, my products. Uh, they need my help. Maybe they don't know who I am. Um, so I want them to collide with me and I need to really think about what would those keywords be that they're entering into the LinkedIn search. Uh, on the flip side, it could also be that a person is searching for you because maybe you popped up on their radar. Maybe you called in, maybe they called you and they want to know that you're a real person. So these are things to just really start thinking about with LinkedIn. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I, I mean, think there's some obvious, there's some obvious mistakes people make. I mean, on that, I mean, if you make yourself obvious that you're like, that you are looking for a job, but you're also at the same time have a job and you're trying to sell to somebody and they look at you and you'd be like, why am I, why would I buy from somebody who's trying to quit the company? <laughs> He's looking yeah. for a new and, job. And a lot, but, but, you know, John, a lot of times people, you know, they, they put their profile out there when they were looking, they get hired and they never think more about it. Yep. And that profile is still showing them as someone who's looking, even though they they long got the job and they're moving on to new things. Yeah. So what are some of the elements that make up a really good, solid profile? I think the headline is hugely important because it follows you everywhere you go on LinkedIn, mm -hmm. every single bit of activity. It's your picture, it's your name, and it's that headline. So it needs to really draw a person in. A lot of times people just use the default and the default is just your current title and current company. And, and that doesn't impress anyone. It doesn't really give a good indication of who you are, what you do, or how you help. So that's a really important field. Plus, when you think about the, the search engine ramifications, um, mm -hmm. by putting in uh, keywords into that particular area, it's very sensitive for the LinkedIn search algorithm. Um, it, it's, it's a place you don't want to ignore. So that would be, I would say, number one on top of everything yeah. is that headline. Yeah, no, no I, I, absolutely. And then I guess, I mean, you even see today, which, which I find kind of bizarre in many ways I mean, you see even today some people don't have pro either don't have photos still which is bizarre but people who still have you know snaps that they took in the backyard or something and that just doesn't really look good i mean once upon a time sure it was expensive to get good shots or whatever but nowadays there's so many different ways you can get good quality uh, headshots I mean, even with, see... yeah i mean hmm. even with just your your your, yeah. your phone i mean the cameras there are are really tremendous 
Yeah, so I mean, just spending a little time and, and effort just making it look as professional as possible rather than looking like it's an afterthought. Um, so, uh, so, there's, so there's a headline, what other elements of a profile should people be looking at? You know, I, I, I don't want to go the easy route, which is, you know, the profile picture with the background graphic. Yeah. I mean, those are like just easy. Uh, sure. Very few people have, you know, that done well, but that's a fine. You know, those are, those are two really easy imagery areas. I would definitely say, you know, the, the about section, uh, that's where you can really give an overview of your career, you can give an overview of who you are, wh what you represent, what you stand for. Um, and, you know, again, most people either leave it blank, they don't have anything, or they might copy and paste an old resume or an old bio. Um, and it's, it's always a shame because, you know, people, I really do believe, you know, people do business with people. And yeah. you want to know more about who is this person, you know, potentially walking into my office or meeting me on that Zoom call, or, you know, who is this person that, you know, I'm going to be reaching out to, to learn more about, you know, whatever product or service, you know, give them something, something that's, that's intriguing, something that sparks their curiosity, you know, really gets them feeling confident and intrigued and, and excited. And, you know, it just takes some time. Yeah. And another thing, too, is like, I mean, I think when you do come across a profile like that, I mean, it's a great thing that if you're if you actually look at those profiles and think, OK, well, how does that profile compare to my profile? And why is why did this one intrigue me as opposed to looking at my own? And maybe it's not that intriguing. Yeah. Yeah. I think, you know, to me, it's it's adding a little bit of a personal, you know, quality, uh, you know, letting a person in to who you are, your warmth, your your personality. Um, I think that's what really gets a person feeling good mm -hmm. when they look at a profile and it's a successful profile. Yeah. And, and what's the, what is the, I mean, there's obviously a happy balance that you have to have between, um, you know, credentialing yourself, looking professional and showing a little bit of humanity. Cause sometimes people go uh, a little oh, bit yeah. too far. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that the one thing, you know, we were talking about people being so loud on LinkedIn, there's, there's this mm -hmm. huge, um, I almost feel like they've taken that, that mantra of being vulnerable <laughs> to uh, an extreme. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that's, uh, I, and that's why I, I, I agree with you. And that's why I think, you know, you need to say, okay, yeah, it's like, it's nice to show a little bit of humanity or whatever, but like, don't go over the top, because then, then that starts to become inauthentic. Yeah, I, I think it, it, but I think it's being authentic. To some people, they will they'll 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 talk a lot about their family, and it's very natural and normal, and it mm -hmm. feels right. And and their their industry and their their company, it works for them. You know, there are some that that it it will work, and then in others, you have to really look. Okay, what's the culture of my company? What's the my industry like? You know, of my clients, are they going to? You know, how much do they want to know? And and definitely, it's 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 not always what you want to say, but it's what your target audience needs to know about you. Okay. Well, that's the thing, and I think that's the point of the point that a lot of people miss is that you're you're writing or you're creating a profile for your target audience. You're not creating it. You are creating it for yourself, but you're not creating it for yourself as a resume, as we said at the beginning. Mm -hmm. But I think you I don't think uh, many people put themselves in the shoes of the person who's going to be viewing it. Yeah. I agree. I agree. And I think that's why we see so many profiles that just don't hit the mark and how many people scratch their head and say, why am I not getting any traction on LinkedIn? Well, you know, the, the reason is because you maybe have just copied and pasted an old bio or something that a person can find anywhere on, on yeah. the internet. Uh, it, it, it is. It's, it's saying to yourself, okay, why? Why am I on LinkedIn? What am I hoping, what am I hoping to get out of it? Who is my target audience? What do they need to know? What's intriguing and important to them? Um, and then what are those keywords? You know, if a person mm -hmm. is trying to find someone like me, what are those keywords? And if you're in sales, but you're selling a product or service, those keywords aren't sales and prospecting and <laughs> yeah. solution selling, right? That's, that's for recruiters. Recruiters are, yep. are putting those keywords in looking for candidates, but you need to start thinking about, okay, what are the, you know, what are those pain points? What are the solutions? What are the issues? What is the name of the product? You know, what is it that you're solving? Those would be the keywords that you want to not just list 
and not just use in a redundant type of way, but you know, work it into the narrative in a really conversational, organic type of way. And as you write, and always people say, oh, I don't want to write too much because no one's going to read it. But at the same time, the more you write, the more chance you have of using those keywords. Right. Yeah. So and the more and and you know, and people react better, I think, to and they may not read everything, but if it's all filled out and there's a lot of good information there, I think it's it's uh, it is credentialing too, if it's done right. Here's another interesting one though. Why do so many, and this is particularly for salespeople, I don't know why, why do so many people are have so few recommendations? You know, John, that's a great question. And at one time, that's one of the big, big hit items on LinkedIn. It was get, you know, get these recommendations. In fact, you needed to have three recommendations to get a hundred percent all-star complete mm -hmm. profile. Um, you know, LinkedIn had really stopped pushing those recommendations. They really started to push the ease of the endorsement. Yeah. But and which, yeah, I agree. The, you know, it's, <laughs> it's, it's easy, but what does it really say about you? Yeah. Um, you know, I, I think it's something that we should go back to and we should be pushing. And it is something that people should say, hey, you know, the ones that I have are from 2011. <laughs> let's, yeah. let's get something fresh and new. And, and, and I also think it's something that a person should be saying, you know, rather than me going out there and asking, how about if I go out and give without even mm -hmm. anyone asking, let me just give some recommendations. I think it's, it's a great way of, of forging a deeper relationship. And I think it's a good way of, of building your own brand and leadership on LinkedIn. Yeah, because when I look at somebody and they have, as you said, like one recommendation from five years ago, you know, it definitely leaves an impression with me, whether that's fair or not, but it definitely just does. And that's why I think it's, a, to your point, it's important to have a number of them and it's important to have, you know, get fresh ones every so often just to show that, yeah, yeah. Five years ago, it looks like you were great. I don't know if you're still great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I agree. And I also, I, one of the things I've always said is, you know, if you want to be seen as a leader, you know, you want to be giving recommendations mm -hmm. just yeah. as much as you're receiving them, you know, because leaders, leaders give recommendations. So, you know, think in that term as well. It doesn't have to be pro bono, like I, or, or quit, you know, not pro bono, I'm sorry, quid pro quo, or yeah, yeah. Quo. <laughs> but yeah. you know, it's not like I give it to you, you give it to me. It doesn't have to be like that. No, no, it doesn't have to be like that. And I found myself like when people, if you, if you create enough value for them and if they appreciate you, they're normally like very ready to give you um, a recommendation. It's uh, you just have to ask for it. You have to ask. And I also believe that you want to do one of two things and it just depends on how ballsy you are. <laughs> so if you're really ballsy. You just write it for them and say, Hey, I know you're busy. Can you, you know, can you put this in, tweak it a little bit, but you know, mm. I, I know you're busy. I, I wrote it for you. Or if you're a little less, um, then what you'd want to say is, look, um, I really want you to talk about my, um, my, my business savvy, my prospecting ability and, you know, this, like give them three things to talk about, or even say, remember when we worked on this project and I did this, could you weave that in? And when you give them that type of either, you just give it to them or you give them that direction chances go so much higher that they're going to respond and respond quickly. Yeah, no, absolutely. And what about that featured element in it, you know, where you can, um, you know, you can post some, you can have some content up there. I think that's something that also that uh, if you refresh on a regular basis, it again, it makes you look like you're, I guess part of the thing is it just makes you look like you're up on things, you're active, you're moving. Relevant, right? <laughs> Relevant, yeah, exactly. <laughs> You know, and, and very few people do have that featured section. It's, it's, mm -hmm. so it's, they sort of worked it in maybe a year and a half ago and they didn't really say anything about it. And uh, very few people even recognize that it's available to them. But yeah, I mean, you can almost like pin your post. Like if you have a really great post that you got out, you put out there, you can pin that, you can do a, an article, you could post links back to your website. Uh, you can upload presentations or even videos from YouTube. Yeah. I mean, it's it's amazing what you can do. No, it, it is. It's incredible what you can do. And I think the other thing, too, is sometimes people just click on their own profile and they don't realize that they're looking at it in the admin uh, mode all the time or whatever, or their editing mode, and that they're not mm -hmm. looking at it actually as how people see it. Yeah. 
Yeah, well, it, and truthfully, it's not much different than what you see. You know, you're, you're minusing the, uh, the, the pencil icons and whatnot. But, you know, it, it is something that um, you want to keep in mind. The other thing that I find that most people ignore, John, is that they're not active on LinkedIn. Mm-hmm. I mean, they just, they don't do anything, um, you know, barely even a like. They might go through and they might, they might actually be, you know, looking at that LinkedIn feed, but they're not actively engaged on it. And so when a person looks at their profile, it says this person has had no activity for the last 90 days. And, you know, if you're a salesperson, that's a little bizarre, right? If you're, mm-hmm. if you're a job seeker, it's really bizarre, <laughs> you know, and, and so if you want people to reach out to you on LinkedIn, if you want that traction, you want to see opportunities, you've got to let people know that you're active. And a good way of doing that is liking, commenting, sharing, and heck, you can do it post. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think the commenting one is the big one, because I tell you, to be honest, um, it's great when people, it's great when people like content, I mean, especially if you're a salesperson, you're trying to engage and, you know, start a dialogue or whatever. It's great liking it. That's fine. I'm sure the author is happy to get as many likes as possible. It's even better commenting. Oh, yeah. But don't, but, but don't do the great post, really interesting comment. Because when I see that on my stuff, I know that 99 times out of 100, that person hasn't read that article. They're just doing it for the thing. It's a lot different if you actually reference something to show that you actually engaged with the content. I, I agree. At the same time, if a person is going to be so kind and they're going to drop a comment in and that's the best that they can do, I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I agree. But, but what I'm saying is I think sometimes I... I, I and maybe it's just the old Irish skeptic in me, but I often believe it's in sometimes it's just people like taking the easy route. <laughs> yeah. No, I, and hey, when to the audience, this is your brand, right? Yeah. This is how people are going to see you. They're going to know of you. Absolutely put in some context, show that you put in a little bit of effort. Um, but at the same time, at the same time, uh, enjoy, have fun you know, be authentic. If it was a great post, go ahead, say great job. It's okay. You know, but balance it out. Don't just, don't just do, what, what is that? The, the old Gary V leave your two cents. And it's like yeah, a person has yeah. like 90 comments that all go great job. Yeah. Not good. <laughs> yeah. But I just think, I mean, if you see, if, it, if you do think it's a great post, there's got to be something great about it. So like a two, two seconds to add a couple of words, great post, love the bit about whatever. I mean, just, yeah. just to, um, because I think that, I think that is, is a really, really great opportunity because let's face it. I mean, we're all egomaniacs at the end of the day. And we love, like, if somebody actually has shown that they have interacted and read what you said, I mean, it counts so much more. Oh Yeah. Well, you know, that, that kind of goes with what I used to always say. People would say to me, oh, my goodness, I, I don't want to turn on my settings. I want to stay anonymous on LinkedIn because I don't want people to see that I checked out their profile. And I used to mm-hmm. always say, turn yeah. it on, check out people's profiles. They're going to know that you've got great taste if you were looking yeah. at their profile. Yeah, yeah. It's I mean, who doesn't egotism. love that? Yeah, it does. I mean, it's it's it, it's absolutely true. I mean, let's face it. We love when we click and we say, oh, look, this person was looking at me. This person was looking at me. Yeah, I mean, the, it makes no sense to be anonymous, particularly if, if you're using LinkedIn as a business tool, then it makes no sense whatsoever. I agree. I agree. Yeah. So what is one of the what is one of the other really obvious mistakes or opportunities that people are overlooking on their profiles? No, I, I think it's it's time to say to yourself, you know, how do I want to be perceived? You know, I'm out there, I'm working hard, I'm hustling, I'm trying to, you know, get business. But at the same time, you know, how, how do I want to be perceived? How do I want people to think about me and feel about me? And, and take that moment and, and go onto your profile and look at it with really fresh eyes. And let's say, all right, let's like hide your picture and just look at the profile and say like, what, what am I feeling from this? Is it, is it eliciting any type of an emotional response? Is it making me feel like, wow, this person cares. This person has credibility. This person has a background, you know, and if it's, if it doesn't, 
you know, it might be time to really, you know, spend some time or, you know, hire someone to, to really craft something that's cohesive, that's unified, that tells a story that really portrays you in a, in an amazing way. And when you do this, John, it's crazy. But when you showcase your best, you start to attract the best. You start to get more qualified hits. You start to get people who, when you get them on the phone, they start to, you know, react to you a little differently, a little bit more warmer. There's like this rapport that starts to get forged sooner because they see you as someone who's relevant and someone that they should respect. And, and you sort of start grab your head, like, why, why is this happening? It's because you put that time into really developing your brand and putting it out there on LinkedIn and, and maybe a few other platforms as well. I, I think that's uh, fantastic advice, because I think the other thing, too, is, is I think it gives you a better sense of who you are. And, yeah. and also, and I think sometimes, and, it, and I've come across this a number of times, like I've, I've helped some people in the past, you know, and one of the, and one of the things that they normally say is I said, well, you know, I don't have a great track record. I don't have a great, you know, I'm, I'm not, th not that interesting. And I say, okay, well, let's go, like, let's go back through it. And when you go with people, they suddenly get surprised. And they go, oh, yeah, I guess that. Oh, yeah, I did. Yeah. And then you suddenly go, yeah, you see, you're a lot more impressive than you think. Yeah. Isn't it? And it's so funny. It's so funny. Here's the thing. People are so busy getting the ball to the other end of the court that they never stop and say, hey, I've, I've done some stuff. I, you know, I really have. You know, I always say, you know, you might start your day with that to-do list, but what do you do? You're checking it off. You're erasing those items that you accomplished. Mm -hmm. And that's a shame. We should not be erasing them. We should be celebrating. Yes, I got this stuff done. Let's put it into the list that says, this is everything that I have accomplished. And then maybe at the end of the month, go through that list and say, you know, what resulted in, in enhanced productivity? What, it, what resulted in more revenue? You know, what really, you know, made a change to the bottom line? And you know what, let's save that in a notebook. Or mm -hmm. let's, you know, keep everything up to date because you know what you want to dig your well before you're thirsty you know you want to make sure that everything is up to date and you're moving forward because you never know when that great opportunity is gonna you know just fall in your lap no uh, absolutely absolutely and I, and I think uh yeah we are so well we say we're so busy today I think we're so distracted to be perfectly honest I think there's a lot of things to get in the way but you're but you're 100 percent correct and that's why I think sometimes if you take a breath you just take a look back um and look back at the obstacles you've overcome the achievements you've had the the great successes maybe you've had with customers and all of that and then start to think you know start looking at yourself differently and projecting yourself differently yeah it, it's 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 life changing when you do it and when you mm -hmm. look at those people who are really successful and you're like how did they get up there they own their successes. They're not afraid of touting what they've done. And, and they're always aware of, are they, are they being challenged? Are they moving ahead or are they stagnating? And as soon as those people start to stagnate, they pivot. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I, I, I know this because for the last, over the last decade, I've been doing nothing but interviewing high level executives and successful people. And this is stuff that I learned and it was, it was shocking to me. Yeah, no, it is. But I think that's it. It, it also, that's sometimes uh, what separates or perceived separates like successful people from other people is that they own their successes. They're not afraid to talk about it. And it's not boasting. It's just been, it's just putting it out there because at the end of the day, Donna, because if I, if, if you're a salesperson or somebody else and I look at you and I think, wow, this person is fantastic. I want to work with them. And that's the reaction that you want. You want to say, okay, this person has got substance. Yeah. People want to work with winners. Yeah. Right. You don't want to work with that desperate, cloying individual. You want exactly. to work with someone who doesn't really want to work with you because they're so successful. Yeah, you want to work, and and you want to you want to uh, you want to work with equals at least. You know, you want to work oh, yeah. with business equals. So, uh, so if you're not projecting yourself as a as a as a successful business person in whatever whatever that means in your particular role, um, you know, then you're 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 cutting yourself short. And that's why short. we want 
And that's why we want people to get that professional headshot. Yes, yes. The, the mobile phone will work. I mean, that yes. mobile camera, especially on the iPhone, will, will, will do a great picture. But at the same time, when you see a person who's getting that really high level executive headshot, and it's, it's clearly professionally taken, that person's, they've, you know, their success. Like you can, yeah. you can feel it. You can see that money and that's yeah. attractive. It is. And the other part about that too is, okay, so you get a professional headshot. I mean, you can get them cheap enough now, but say, okay, say you like three, $400, right? If you really want to go to somebody good, but you can get it like a lot cheaper than that too. But it's not just for your LinkedIn profile. Maybe you want to put it on your email as well, you know, so that when somebody gets an email, they go, oh, now I see what the person looks like. I mean, there's many places you can use, you can use it. But we're such visual people, and especially in the world we live in today is, uh, you, again, I think you're selling yourself short if you're not using your headshot, uh, you're not getting a professional headshot, and you're not using it uh, all over the place. I, I have found that as soon as you get that headshot, as well as if you get a bio as well, mm -hmm. suddenly, it's weird. I don't know how this happens, John. I think it's the universe. But <laughs> you find there's, there's suddenly reasons. Opportunities start to drop on your lap. You know, when you have everything you need in your back pocket, suddenly you have use for it. Suddenly mm -hmm. opportunities start to hit where you can use it. And it's, it's funny how it works. Yeah. And it's funny the first time somebody goes, wow, I'm really, I, I, I looked you up on LinkedIn. Wow. Impressive background. And you're like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're exactly. You're like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're very perceptive <laughs> yeah. well listen um listen donna this has been fantastic thank you so much all of donna's information is going to be below this video but before we go please do tell people a little bit more about you and what you do sure so um back in 2009 i had this crazy idea that i was going to start a business helping salespeople and executives and entrepreneurs and professionals from all over the world write their LinkedIn profile in an optimized way so that they can change their lives and achieve their most sought after goals. Uh, 10 years later, 20 writers later, over 6,000 profiles written, resumes, bios, blogs, all you name it. Uh, we're having the time of our lives. It's fulfilling. I love what I do and I love helping people. No, and it's fantastic. And there's there's nothing better than that. There's nothing better than feeling like you're helping people and really making a difference. And especially in an area where a lot of people clearly still need help. Oh my goodness. It's it's you know what it's so hard. It's hard to write yeah. about yourself. And the, the other issue is it's hard to write about yourself, but it's also hard to find a person who's a really good writer, who's a really good listener, yeah. who understands business, who understands your industry, and can really write in that authentic, high-level manner. And that's, and that's what you want. It's not one of those turn them and burn them. Let me just copy and paste something from an old resume service. But like, let's really use this as your professional manifesto. Yeah, no, I, I agree 100%. I mean, and I think you should always use experts if you can. And uh, I would encourage people to reach out and look at Donna's work. I mean, I'll tell you years ago, I, uh, I, I paid a, a, a resume writer years and years ago, right? Um, because, and really good guy cost quite a lot of money. But you know, I thought afterwards, the, the resume was so amazing, because he knew what to look for, knew what to dig out of me. And then I thought about it afterwards. I thought about why am I, why am I even looking at the price tag of this? Because this has gotten me job after job. Right? Yeah, there's an investment. There's an investment. Yeah. It's not an expense. It's an investment. And yeah. when done well, and when you invest yourself, your time, your money, and you get the right person to help you, mm -hmm. you're going to see that back in most likely oh. the very first paycheck. Oh, hundred percent, hundred percent. So I would encourage people check out Donna's work and, uh, you know, have a look at your profile today or have somebody else look at your profile and say, does this, does this inspire you? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Listen, my name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeliner, CRM. See you all for another interview really soon. Thank you.